Okay, it's nine o'clock. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to introduction to GEOPAC survey. Uh, one of the things I wanted to make you aware of is we've had GEOPAC survey for quite a while, but only in the last couple of years have we had a database that was uh, allow, sufficient to allow us to take advantage of GEOPAC surveys uh, capabilities. I have right at the moment up uh, a Casey database of a typical survey of a bridge job. And the reason I have that up is to show you to, uh, the data that I'm gonna bring out of Casey and bring into GEOPAC survey. The intent of this survey is, uh, or this particular webinar is to show you how to bring this data in and make a typical delivery of your topo RD, your utilities RD, UTX RD, and your DREX RD, your drainage uh, file of, of utilities and drainage structures and topo that are existing. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. Uh, one way is we could actually come in to the FD, FDOT 2010 menu and we could export via um, a KCP file. Actually, that's not where we're gonna do it. We can save it here as a KCP file. Now we could save points by itself or we could save survey chains by itself. Actually, uh, there's another way we can save them both together. And that's what I'm gonna show you right now is uh, through the project manager, you can save the entire project, with, which will be all the points and chains as a KCP file. So um, I'm gonna name it just, uh, right after the project, and it'll be saved as a KCP file. Let's see. Um, let's save that. Do that one more time, please. One, two, eight, two, three. And uh, did I ever get it saved? Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring up Geopack, or this is actually Power Geopack, but uh, it's, it works the same with MicroStation and Geopack. Oh, Casey is closing out. And uh, there's a couple of ways you can use Geopack survey. You can process with it also, but right at the moment, I'm just going to bring in a KCP. First thing to do is to create a file and I'm gonna create it in my project directory under C, the uh, FPID number, and I've made a directory here called Geopack and I'm gonna make a new file and I'm gonna make this a 3D file in case at, at some point I wanna build a DTM. I'm not gonna do that today because that's a little bit more involved. It'll take, it'll, be, it's, it'll take a little bit more time than this webinar will allow. Again, I'm just gonna name it the same. What you do? What you do? and save it and I'm going to open this geopack file as a microstation DGen and I'm working on a little bit of a slow laptop so please bear with me uh, you want to go ahead and and make that project directory That particular item will actually just build a 
meta database attached to your uh, your folder that you make that your uh, current DGN file your DGN file is in. Once open, I'm going to go ahead and open up Geopack Survey. And for those of you who've taken courses in Geopack Survey, uh, you know it's uh, before, it's important to set your project preferences up. Now there's, there's a few places you can set your project preferences. Uh, under Geopack, you can, user, you can set user preferences. If you don't have anything set up at all, this is where you can check and see what it is. And I'm gonna change this to uh, the FDOTE underbar 10 file. Now, if you're not new to DOT, you'll remember that there's there was quite a few SMDs. We've actually consolidated our databases down to two. And this includes roadways SMD and right of ways SMD. We're going to use the FDOTE underbar 10.SMD to create the survey deliverables. And this is one place you could set the preferences. This would, this, this where I just showed you to set it, you can be overrided by this, this particular spot. <clears throat> And this is user preferences. Let me go back to that just one, one more second. You can make it, you're, we're going to make a new one, but it's important to go ahead and set a couple of things in this preference box. One is um, under the user settings, Geopack survey requires that you put a name in it. So I've just put a, my name, John, in here and uh, the user code, uh, my initials, JH. Uh, I've already have this set, and if in, in, you can hit the the, the um, little magnifying glass to set your folder preferences, and by default it's there. And I've, I've actually got the name of a of a Geopack pro survey project name up here. If this was empty, you would just go ahead and fill it in. So, and we'll say okay have these settings and then go into Geopack to the project and under new and create a new project. <clears throat> and because those preferences were set below uh, when I just, just did it previously, you can see that it fills out this box. Now right here under project preferences, we need to go through all of this. Uh, and this is, this is just what you saw a moment ago we need to go ahead and fill it out completely. The user settings, set your names, set your OP code. Uh, under configuration, you can just leave these bl blank. Under data set, we're gonna bring, be bringing in, uh, this is where you set your data set name. If you have segments you could create uh, and you're going to process them, you may wanna set, set this as A and click this. So this would, the use data set name as output set subdirectory. This would keep your segments separated. For what, what I'm gonna do is just bring in a KCP. That's not necessary. And I'm just gonna give it a name. This is just, I'm just gonna call it a survey. So uh, the, and, um, and I'm not going to uh, separate that right at the moment. So, it just, so that, that way everything's just gonna fall into the same directory or folder. Uh, under data source, we have quite a few options here. If you're going to process, you will need to make it an OBS file. If you're gonna process a FDOT um, uh, OBS file. And there's also a control file that will go along with this. So you would need a control file and OBS to process. I'm gonna bring in a data file and you have quite a few options here. Some two, two, there are actually three options I could have exported to Casey and brought in as a land Excel, XML, a uh, Casey SRV, or a Casey KCP. The reason I'm using a Casey KCP 
is because it will uh, honor the chain gaps. The, the SRV and the XML will not honor the chain gaps in your data. They will actually connect the chains and you'll get some circles, some of them quite large. Uh, so right at the moment, KCP file is the way to go. Um, we don't use linking codes because OBS file you, uh, uses chains and uh, linking codes are for creating chains from points. Uh, other types of software will do that. Uh, if you're using an OBS file, there are some options here. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. If, you, if you're bringing in a control file and you're processing, you'll wanna click on the import CTL points. And if you do not, either way, if you do not check this box, it defaults to the current Active Directory, whatever you're working in. That, that your DGN is in. So, um, uh, which is up here, this actually, this particular DGN. Uh, if you're, if you are uh, reducing, you'll need to tell it what type of adjustment. Uh, normally we use a, a Ray Hintz's least squares adjustment, which would be here. Uh, I'm not going to be adjusting, so that's not an issue at this moment. Now this box, we do want to set some settings here under data set and configuration. You want to import after direction, after reduction, if you do redu reduce it. And you also want to click this box, store elements into GPK. If you don't do check this particular box, when you bring in your data, it will give you a message saying you must check this box. Um, and these are a couple, this is to show your other data sets and you wanna check your clear your raw data set uh, in case you are reducing raw data. S under visualization, you wanna make sure you set this to the correct SMD. Again, we're right back to this one. Uh, this, and we're still under preferences, so we're making sure we set all this. And you wanna set your plot scale. And it's very typical to set it to 50, uh, some of your deliveries will be in 40 scale, but this is a very uh, typical uh, scale. Now, the apply features best match is we don't check that on because GeoPack survey will go out and look for the best feature match if you don't have a particular feature set. Uh, and that's really a problem. Uh, if, if, the, if the feature is not in the database, you, you really don't want it guessing. It's better to go to none to, or go to a default level. And Geopack survey will actually let you know that you have a feature that does not match your database if you don't have this clicked. And in the data set I just brought, a, brought in, there is one feature, the boundary was set to none. I made sure that it was set to none. So you'll see this happen. Uh, in mapping, you want to bring in your name, your elevation, your name and your point number, your elevation, any description, any comment that is the field crew uh, put into the OBS file and then brought, got brought across into Casey. Under configuration, you want to auto draw mapping after process or import. Uh, you can say hit this one, always draw mapping into the DGN, to this DGN file, it allows you to pick a DGN and again, if you don't, it, if you don't set one, uh, in this case, it, it's grayed out. It will default to the current active DGN, which is the 422.8231. Uh, we're not going to be using cross sections or the, for this particular webinar. Again, that's a little bit uh, time consuming, and that's beyond what I'm going to show you here. Um, the geometry, this is something you want to set. Now, this particular job is in Florida State Plain North. It's, uh, it's, it's, in a, it's actually a district three draw, job. So I want to pull this out and show you. This can be a little confusing if it's the first time you see it. Uh, we're not, not in world coordinates. We're not in, not in geographic. We're actually in a projected zone. So you look, go under projected, find your North America, United States, under Florida, and 
bring that in and down. And what you'll see is down here, 0903, this is our zone. And these are actually already set. And you wanna do this for both uh, your use model coordinate system for source and your system for target. Uh, also, you have the options of applying a geoid. At this point, I'm just using the projection. So <clears throat> click OK on that. And again, you have DTM settings. Uh, set this to point, chain, attribute, whatever the crew set in the field is the attribute. However, you can change it to the feature table. Uh, we did preset some of these and or all of these in the feature table, but then you're letting the feature table do the guessing where the crew actually knows better. Uh, here in your settings and your stroking, you, you, this is just a, a pretty much a, uh, a standard setting. You want a 0.1 for your arc stroke tolerance and linear stroke distance of, of 25 feet is good. If the triangles, if the maximum triangle size is 50 feet, this will actually interpolate halfway through that. So uh, that's that's a pretty good setting for that. So that I think that sets all of our project settings. I'm going to say OK, and it's going to create it. Say OK, and, and as you saw that it had, it's going to create its job 001, so it's going to create a GPK file. This is just an empty GP, GPK file at this moment. So under now that we've got our project setting set, under data set, we can uh, create a new data set. And I'm going to call this, this one survey. It, it, I ha actually set that in the preferences. And the description is a case. Uh, uh, KC KCP file. This is uh, this was set in the project settings also. And again, if you if you do want to set a segment, if you want to process a segment, you can separate it by using the data set name as output subdirectory. You may make this A for your control or B for some of your topo, etc. Over here is where you actually go out and get the data set. And I have. That one's saved that I saved just a moment ago. And I'm going to bring it in. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, OK. And uh, this will take a moment to bring it in. Now, what it's doing, it's bringing it in. It, it's creating a data set. And it's, and it's bringing, bringing this data into the GeoPack survey editor. And I'm going to bring that up in just a moment and show you. you if you're processing, you, you would want to look at this. You can see setups, uh, all your observations here. If you're just bringing across a KCP file like I'm showing you here, uh, it will show, I'm gonna open the, open the editor. Here it is, say so open. Um, and bring up the editor, it'll take just a second. It's gonna load the survey editor with the data that was in the KCP file. I'll give it just a moment here. It's uh, it's not a lot of points, but it uh, it is a few. And this is, uh, this is your survey, this is your GeoPack survey editor. And this is very typical. You're gonna see setups and chains now, because we didn't have any observations, this is just survey points and survey chains. This is what it'll look like if you bring in a KCP file. Our setups just are points. So if you look, if, if I go through this, you can see that it's every point that was in the GPK file. I mean, it goes all the way down uh, alphabetically to the X's. Uh, as far as the chains, it brings in again, alphabetically all the chains that were in the GeoPack database. Okay, I'm going to close this. Now that we see that we've got uh, we've got points and we've got chains, we want to bring them into our GPK file. So we say import to GPK, and it's going to do that. And if it sees any features that don't match should show up here. 
by the moment it's bringing into chains. Uh, while it's doing this, I'll mention that we also have uh, a right-of-way SMD file, uh, FDOTE underbar 10 RW for building the topo RW file. And the, the uh, process is the same, it's just you use a different SMD file. And uh, I'm gonna, if we have time, I'll try to do that today. It's visualizing the points into the DGN. Uh, it's also important to understand that right at the moment we are working with a data set. Uh, it is bringing these points and chains into the DG, into the GPK file for, for uh, Geopack, the Geopack job file, but uh, that's not where it's visualizing. It is actually visualizing from the data set. And I'll show you. Uh, the difference and why that is, why that is important to understand. Uh, as you remember, I, I mentioned that there was one code that I left as none, and it didn't feed it didn't meet the feature. And here it is. It'll tell you, do you want to save it into a feature code error file? And I'll say okay, and this gives you the opportunity to go up and look and see what it was uh, in the in the uh, error file. And I'm going to bring it up. Now you see we've been, we've, it's populated all of this. This was an empty file, just an empty folder just a moment ago. And uh, I'm going to show you what the error code says. The feature code is none. This is, um, it found one unknown feature code. So what you can do is go back to Casey, find the feature none and correct it and then re, uh, redo this process. Okay, just so. Uh, Go back to Geopack for a moment. Now, it also, it, because I had the visualize uh, automatically checked, it visualized the entire database. And, and here it is. And I want to, I want to show you, it, it, it is a 3D database. You can, you can rotate it. Uh, all the points and chains are there. Let me go back to I'm going to go back to the top view for a moment here. Let me do this. And I want to mention a few things about the points and chains. Now, we have, we, I did bring in the, the name of the point, the elevation, and a marker, a location uh, marker for it. And each of these uh, individual elements are on their own level. If I hover over them, you'll see them. This one is a, as a it's the name of it. The feature is the default point. It is on text point label. If you look down about middle way in the box, the level. If you go over here to the elevation, you'll see it's also on the, it's a default point feature and it's on text elevation label. And then the point itself, the point marker itself is, is on point locator under bar EP. But this is just a typical ground shot. All the points that were that are associated with cells that had features, for instance, this uh, this is a piling. The cell itself comes in, and it, and you see it if if you um, you see I actually have this element information box opens, and if you select the element, it will populate that box and show you a little bit about it. You see the scale is set to five because that's the way. Uh, uh, we, we have everything, all our cells are set to one, one foot equals, or it's kind of a one to one. So, um, so this, in order to see it, this is something that's preset. The side of this box will be approximately five feet. Uh, all of our cells will be that way. If I, if I select on this one, this is, shows you it's an IRC. It shows you the cell name is iron rod cap. And again, it's set to five. Our chains are similar. Now, if, they're, if they're just a uh, microstation chain, 
if it's a microstation line style over here, you can look under line style parameters. You'll see the scale is set to one, but if it's a custom line style, like this uh, fiber optic, you'll see this, it, it does read it from the preferences and it's set it to 50. So really everything is pretty much set right here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and click it and I'm gonna delete this for a moment. <clears throat> and uh, that was a feature that was set to none. So it didn't come in on any partic particular uh, level. Our fences, everything is set pretty much the way it should be. It's, and it is in 3D. Now, what we wanna do is we want to take advantage of Geopack Survey's visualization capabilities. And you do that by going to display and display by feature. If you've taken the Geopack, uh, if you've taken Alvi's Geopack course, he goes through this. What you'll see here is this is, the folders are set up as our deliver, deliverables. We have a Topo RD, a UTEX RD, a DREX RD. We also have a DTM and the default points are separated so they can be visualized separately if you want to if you, if you, or if you don't want to. Now the strong point or the strong feature of this box and the data you see is whatever box you set you, you actually select, you have options to visualize. This is normal display. This is to highlight whatever the display is, which would be Topo RD. And you, if you'll give it just a moment, you'll see it highlight. Okay, that's all the Topo RD elements. This will actually hide the Topo RD elements and show everything except for Topo RD. Let it regenerate. And then the last box is display only the selection and it will display only the topo RD. Like I said, this, is, this laptop's a little slow, but as you can see, it's showing the topo RD elements. At this point, we can actually create our deliverables. Um, Something else I wanted to mention is down at the bottom, this is the collection box. So you can actually combine these folders or elements within these folders. You can open this box. Let me, let me go back to normal so it'll so it won't keep regenerating. Hold on just a moment. Okay, I'm gonna go back to normal. And you can actually put the entire box or any one of the elements within this box into the collection. So it will, and this is just for visual, visualization purposes. So let me close this and I'll show you, you can use this add highlighted to the collection or you can just right click and say add to collection and it will put it to the bottom. So if you want to show, if you want to uh, create a 2D file of your topo RD with all your topo elements plus all your ground shots, you would come down to the default and, and here we, we actually had to create features for, the, for your ground shots because typically our crews don't add a feature or don't shoot a, a ground shot with any type of feature. Yeah. Uh, if, it's just a, um, if it's just a topo shot for the purpose of a DTM or for, for ground elevations, then there's no feature and Geopack wants to put it somewhere, it actually puts it on the default underbar point. Uh, you'll see in the future, the data acquisition does the same thing, but it puts it under default. So it also it depends on if you're bringing in an XML or an SRV, whether it calls it default underbar point or whether it calls it default. So we actually put both of these uh, in, in the database as features. If I add this to the collection file, the collection file overrides anything you have clicked up here. I'll close this and show you. So now if I display only the selection, it's only gonna display what's in the collection box. In this case, it'll be the topo RD plus the default points. Now, if you don't want to show those, you can just say clear collection and you can actually do it, go right back uh, 
it's using this particular folder right here to create your deliverable. Now there, there's a couple of ways this can be displayed. As I said before, we're actually displaying the data set. So if I close this, I'm going to go back to normal, show everything. I'm going to go up to data set and we'll say close and close this particular data set. It's not going to get rid of the elements on the file, but it, it, it severs the tie between the data set and these elements. It, it, so to speak, anyway. Um, the reason you'll do this is, is you want to create your, your data set or you want to create your deliverable um, from the visualization. And let me show you one more thing. Let me, now that I've, I've actually turned the project off, uh, there's a couple of ways of doing this, and, I, and I'm going to do this as a 3D. What you would do, uh, optimally, what you would do at this point is you would create your DTM, and you would have one entire database right here, and you would, you would do with that whatever you need to, which is to separate out your DTM or to separate out your topo RD or your utilities or your drainage file. I'm gonna go back to by feature and show you there's a couple of ways we can do this. Um, we show the, as I showed you before, we can show the, just the topo RD. But how to get that into another file is a question. If we hit the hide the selection, and now I've got Topo RD highlighted. If we hit the hide selection, it's going to show everything except for the Topo RD. And what I could do at this point, bringing it out because I want to be able to, to fence it. <clears throat> what I could do at this point is fence everything and just delete it because everything is shown except for the topo RD. If I'm creating the topo RD, everything's shown except that, I would actually go in and I would hit a delete, clear it. And what you would end up with is just, just the elements that are in the topo RD. Turn the fence off, display normally. So now what you see, the only thing that's in this file is are the elements that, as I said, that are in the topo RD. I'm gonna show you another way of doing this also. At this point, I could say file, save as, and uh, say topo RD 01, and go ahead and save it. If I hit this, it'll actually switch that. So I don't want to do that right at the moment, but this would this would create the topo RD file. What I want to do is I want to undo this and, and bring back let's see, all the elements. The other way to create the topo RD is just to show it as I did, as I'm doing right here. and do a fence file. And what you do is you just put the fence around it and down in the, the uh, key in box, type in fence file and hit enter. And it's gonna say, what's the name of the file? I'm gonna put topo rd01 and say save. And if you, now this is very important. If you notice right down here at the bottom, it says copy fence contents into new file, except or reject. You actually have to click on the screen to make that happen. So I'm gonna click on the screen. So right now it's actually writing it into the topo RD file that I just created. And I'm going to go ahead and take that off and 
go back, show everything normally. At this point, I want to open up that, uh, let's see. And it actually created it, uh, believe it or not. show you where it actually created it. We'll do that one more time. Show dance. And it created it right under our project directory. Okay. So I'm going to open that um, that one up. I'm going to go up one, open the topo RD. And this is a 3D file, as you'll notice at the top, but the process is exactly the same with a 2B, 2D file. At this point, you could go into file and export. Let's see, where is it? File right here, export, and you can export it as a 2D file, and that would create an identical file, and it would just be 2D. Um, you'll see right here, it, it, I, I do have a file called topo rd01. Uh, it has all the topo elements. If I, if I go up here to the, our FDO2 menu and do a quick check, you're gonna see its compliance is 100%. So we've actually created the topo rd. The, the, the process is exactly the same for the utilities file and the drainage file. What I wanna do is show you, and, and, and we could go ahead and create those, but instead of doing that, I wanna show you one other thing, one other way that this uh, Geopack survey uh, is a very useful tool because what we ended up with, and we'll close MicroStation for a moment. I wanna show you what you can do. We, we ended up with a job 001.gpk. That's really all we need, again, to create those deliverables. And it's also all we need to deliver to right of way for them to create their topo RW or for them to use those points to whether they're going to create a control survey or uh, use those in, in analyzing uh, your your sections, your townships, your ranges, and, and any information you need to analyze. And I'm going to open up MicroStation. This is going to be a brand new file. And actually, I'm going to create a topo RW file. I'm going to show you that that only that all I need to do that at this point is using the GPK file. So I'm going to create a new file. This one I'm going to make it. I'm going to make a 2D file, files, FDOT 2D seed, say OK. And I'm going to call this a topo RW dot, well, dot DGN and say save. And I want it right here with this one. And uh, actually, I wanted to call it a topo RW01. Let me rename this. 01.dgn and I'm going to open that file. This is just a, a straight MicroStation, uh, empty MicroStation file with an FDOT 2D seed. And you want to say OK, and this is where I want to create it. It's right here under the project directory. <clears throat> And Geopack survey is open. I want to set the preferences at this point. I want to change the visualization from FDOTE underbar 10.SMD to FDOTE underbar 10RW.SMD. Show you the differences. Other than that, I'm going to leave everything the same. We could at this point, if it's a uh, uh, actually, I want to change this to a uh, hundred scale to show you that uh, it, it doesn't matter what scale, whatever scale you want to bring it in, 
this is uh, this is where we'll set. I'm not going to open the project. Uh, I'm just going to set the preferences. And what I am going to do is open Classical Kogo. If you uh, let me show you, if I hit if I hit a uh, fit view, there's nothing in the file. It's just an empty file. So I'm going to open up Kogo, and let's see. We actually have to go. We have to go bring that GPK file over. I wanted to, I wanted to do it in a different direct, different directory to show you that that's all I'm using. Say so paste and put it right here. Okay. Now when I say yeah, Geopack uh, Geometry, I'm open up Classical Kogo, and here's the GPK file I just put in there. Say so, okay. And if I was to type list points, you can see all, all the points came over from the database, from the KC database. If I said, uh, again, if I list uh, survey chains, all the survey chains come over. And an easy way to deal with this, we've had this uh, functionality for quite a long time, is to use your navigator. And you could have opened, you also can open that from right here. So you could, if you open Navigator straight from here, it will actually open Geopack Survey 2, or you'll open up your Geopack Kogo also. And you can see I've already got it set survey chains as an option. But you can see all the chains are there. All the names have changed. And what's more important, not just the chains are there, all the features are there. Everything that's in there that was that the crew collected, all the features are there. The same is true with our points. All the points are in the file or in the GK file. All the chains, all the all the features uh, for those points are also in the GPK file. All our iron rods, our nails, our monuments. Every default shot, default point shot the, are there. Everything else, there's our pylons. Um, if you go on down, you'll see, you see every single shot that they, that they took is there and it is featureized. Okay. Now, to, to display these into the MicroStation DGN file, just select them all. And you use the visualize element, the little paint tool. Hit that. It's going to draw everything into the GPK or into the DGN file. It works almost just like the data set. And that's drawing a little slowly, but it's drawing. Won't take but a moment. See, while that is uh, while that's drawing, uh, let me mention that we visualize pretty much the same way as we did. It says it's not responding, but it it actually is. It, it will take a, just a minute. We actually visualize exactly the way we did the data set. We used Geopack Survey. Once it's Visualize once it's finished. You want to go ahead and clear the selection, or it'll keep it. Uh, it'll, it'll remember that, and it'll keep everything selected. I'm going to go down to survey chains. I'm going to select all of them, and all the, all those survey chains. I'm going to visualize those into the DGN file too. Not quite as many, so it's much quicker. And I'm going to clear this selection also. Again, it will remember that if you don't clear the selection. Okay, I can close this. I'm just going to lower the Kogo. Now, when I visualize it, we're right back to where we were. We have, including our, uh, our, our uh, feature that had uh, no, no uh, our, our chain that had no feature. In this case, like I said before, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. I could change it to correct it uh, and, and leave it though. 
All right, so what we now have is we have a 2D file. There's, you can't, there's no rotating the view other than in a 2D plane and all the points and features are there. If you didn't want, and, and this is true also in the DGN file, if you don't want to see the default points or you only want to see certain elements of default points, you can, uh, you can turn these off. They are on their own level. I turned off the elevation. Here I turned off the uh, name and I'm going to turn off the point locator. Now we're back to just points and chains. And if you notice, it highlights the mass because it actually used the topo rw file. So the, the cells are a little bit different. The mass in right away likes to see a mass in order to cover up lines at the intersection of point of uh, uh, of the lines where the where the cell is sitting, if it, especially if it's a monument cell. As you can see, it also it includes the any comment that the uh, crew put on there. I could actually turn that off if we wanted to, or we could leave it on. And, and <clears throat> so I'll put it, I want to leave that on for the moment. And here is everything that's in the database. Now to visualize it, we go right back to the same visualization in Geopack survey bar and visualize by feature. And as you can see, the FDOT underbar 10RW.SMD is a little bit different. Now the default, one thing you'll notice different is the monuments are actually separated. And the reason they're separated is we cannot have duplicates within this file. And monuments are important to not just the topo RW, they're important to the utilities, they're important to the existing drainage, they're, uh, exist, they're important to the control survey. So depending on what you want to show uh, on your, what elements you want to see, uh, this is where you'll actually put them into your collection box down at the box, bottom to visualize. So if I just wanted to show the topo RW without any monuments, I would go over here and display only the selection. And here, here it is. This is everything except for the monuments themselves. And you got signs, you have your, your riprap, your pylons, everything is there. Okay. Now, if I want to add them to the collection box, I can use this little tool right here, or you can, and, I, and along with the monuments, I could say add to collection box. And now it's showing the monuments also. Anything else you want to see, if I want to clear the selection box, and also can clear it right here, if I want to see just what's in the control survey, and add that to the collection box. Now, in, in this case, the only thing that would be in a control survey would be uh, that was collected on this job are the monuments. But uh, anything that is in this control survey base, your baseline, anything you show that you draw in and put into Geopack can be showed right here. What you want to do is you want to use your SMD to create the elements. When you draw them, make sure you select these. If you use these names, whether it's your quarter sections, your section lines, whatever it is, once you draw them, then you can, and you use a feature to draw them, then they'll, they'll, they can be visualized using this survey display box. So what I want to do is I want to show you, I'm going to go ahead and clear this uh, collection box and I'm going to create a total RW. I'm going to add that to the collection file. I'm going to add existing monuments to the collection file. And here we are showing only these elements. And if I, I actually call this a Topo RW01, uh, it kind of actually jumped the gun on the name. But if I fence file this out, yes. File, hit enter, and I want to put this under um, our project directory. I want to go right here, and I'm gonna, I'm going to call this Topo RW02. Say say. Technically, uh, probably should have named the first file this Topo RD RW01. I could have named that the master file. Calling this 
to click on the screen to write it into the file. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to exit, or I'm going to open the Tokyo RW02. And you see it actually showed compliance was 99% on that particular one uh, anyway. And now the Topo RW02 is up. And if I hit uh, our QC checker, it's going to find something. It actually did find something, uh, some complex strings. Something um, didn't come through. I probably did something. Oh, I didn't do something. Oh, I know what it was. I didn't. I didn't go to. Um, let me go back. See. Uh, let me go back to Topo RDO one. And some of you may have noticed what I did wrong. This is very typical. Let me open up. Show it again. I went when I went to my feature. And I made made the collection file. I didn't click on the display only. That's the only thing I want to show. So when a fence file by display only, it's showing just what's in the collection box. This that's when I want to go fence file. Hit enter. Or overwrite that Topo RW2. So, yes. And write it in there. And file open. Let me open that Topo RW02. Okay, now if I check compliancy, it's a hundred percent. Looked at all the elements. And so that, that's one way of creating your Topo RW. The other way is file is, is I'm gonna go back to the Topo RW01. I wanted to show you that this was the final way of showing it. And, and I touched on this, this again, when I created the Topo RD file. So this, remember this has all the elements in there. I show them like this. I wanna zoom out a little bit, close this display. I want to just, I want to hide the existing monuments in the top of RW like that. And it'll show everything except those. Now it actually will pass the ground shots if you want to see them in the file. I use a fence that delete everything except for the existing monuments in the Topo RW. And turn off the fence, go back to normal display. Now only what was in the collection is showing. I can actually delete this collection file because actually these are only the elements that are in the file. I can close that. I can even close Geofax survey. Uh, I can so, uh, close the GPK file itself, highlight it. And when I check it, it's gonna say 100% compliant. So that pretty much uh, completes my presentation wanted to show you this functionality because it actually is very powerful and it's a it's a very much a time saver for the districts and the consultants and I guess at this point I'll open up uh, uh, if anybody has any questions I uh, you could, but it's actually preset in the SMD file. Um, the reason for this is uh, it, it makes it easier to control. The, if if uh, you, you can actually go into the SMD itself and, and change the scale, um, um, 
That, that is a good question. The reason we do this is because if you, if you set it at a larger scale, then if, if I don't set, if I set it at everything at the same scale as all the sales, you're just going to be overwhelmed with text. You're not going to be see every, be able to see everything. So we actually set it kind of at a standard of a half a foot. Uh, the the text that that is important that you see is going going to need to be scaled. Generally, I think you would turn off your uh, your elevation text and and your point name. So you would you would just actually turn those off. And this is the text. So, so you don't really have a, a final product here, but what you do have is a product you can work with. So I, I guess the, it, to answer the question is it could be done, you could actually manually do it in the SMD file, but this is something you're going to have to work with uh, within uh, your microstation functionality. And you can do that by, you can click on all the text. You could go over here and change your height and uh, here. So if you wanted it smaller, you would say 0.1. If I wanted a lot bigger, I could say 10. And then uh, say if I wanted it here, 10. And so, you know, you're just going to have to work with that within your microstation functionality. But it actually is pretty easy to do. You can turn on just just this particular level and then scale them all at one time. At this point, yes, they uh, most of the districts do. I, I think that would be a district preference. And so my answer would be yes, unless a district says otherwise. Uh, we do actually the utilities file, the, the verification for utilities is all it is is a utilities in 3D. So, so you, you're actually, you don't even have to recreate the 2D version and you've got your verification for utilities file. Well, this is a, this was just transferring the uh, the data from Casey, so it should be it should be done in Casey in in this particular uh, scenario that I showed. If you are processing in GeoPack Survey, you would you would do it here. You would do it in you would do it in your GeoPack editor. You'd actually go in and and uh, edit the points, your observations, wherever the problem was, and then re and then re reduce it or re reprocess it. All right. Thank you very much, everyone.